Whenever you guys are ready, can you talk through what you put together? Great, yeah. We have put together a, uh, a sort of pitch shifter guitar pedal. Um, we implemented pitch shifting on the FPGA, so we take an input signal to the FPGA and output a shifted output signal um, with the pitch shifted. So you can hear with the D string very faintly. We're sort of struggling to get the whole guitar set up, but you can very faintly hear the same yeah. pitch of the guitar. But then you can see without him changing his finger, yeah. you can shift it up to uh, with our software. Yeah, so now it's up an octave in the output, yeah. and you can yeah. shift it down as well. Okay. Um, so there's some there's some noise in the system, but you can certainly hear the, hear the system. pitch shift. And you can yeah. shift it in all the notes in between, too. So if you want to shift 0, start at 0, and shift up 1 through 12, so we can hear it go up sort of chromatically. Right. That's up 1. So... So you can choose any of the 12 notes within a range of up one octave or down one octave. Okay. Um, it's also per string. Yeah, so, so then the other the thing is that we have each string hooked up to a different channel. So the pitch shift is not, and there are six parallel pitch shifters in the hardware. So the pitch shift is not like for the whole signal, it's per string. Um, Okay. And so you can hear, like, if you do the D string, we have that shifted up an octave. Maybe yeah. shift that up by one note, like, so up to... Uh, which one? Uh, three. Three. Up what? Two. And then if you go to the A string now, you can shift that maybe down to the A string. Two, down two. Is it right? No. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you can see the D string is still shifted up yeah. one while the A is shifted down two. So you can um, individually pitch shift each, each, string. each string separately. Right. And the goal of that is people will play guitars in alternate tunings. So people will write different songs for a guitar in, like, with each string tuned yeah. differently. And it's annoying when you're practicing the guitar if you want to learn a new song to have to retune your guitar every yeah. time. So the idea is if you have control over every string with a whole range of two octaves, you can not only very easily set your guitar to a different tuning, yeah. but you can also you could also experiment with tunings that aren't physically possible with the like string tensions that are given, right? So nobody can tune their guitar to all the same note, but with this, you theoretically could, and maybe that gives you a cool sound. Um, Interesting. So the sound is a little rough and staticky, and if we were better analog DSP guitar audio engineers, then that I think could be smoothed out, clearly. Mm -hmm. People do know how to mostly work it out. Well. Yeah, but um, the, that's sort of the idea behind the pitch shifting. Can you can you explain how the pitch shifting is actually occurring? Like, mm -hmm. wh what is the algorithm by which that takes place? Yeah, so the algorithm we implemented is um, the audio input is sampling um, through for each of the six ADCs at uh -huh. the same rate. It's about uh, 16 kilohertz for each ADC. It's a little rougher than that because the ADCs are SPI devices, so you set their SPI clock 
and they sample based off of that. Okay. Um, but they are all sampling at the same rate. The pitch shifter waits for a valid audio input signal from the ADC, and then each shifter has a ring buffer of audio samples. So there's one right pointer in the ring buffer, and it every time there's a new audio sample, it increments and writes to a new address. This is all stored in M10K memory. Um, each buffer is 1,024 entries long. Um, and then, so that's how you write your audio signal to the ring buffer. And now the pitch shifting aspect of it, we have a read pointer, or originally we had a read pointer that follows around this ring buffer at a, an amount that is different than the right buffer and that translates to the pitch shift amount. So okay. shifting up one octave from like dum to dum is a frequency, is doubling the frequency. Um, so if you wanted to shift up one octave, which is sort of the maximum we support, then your read buffer would be going twice as fast as your write pointer. Sorry, your read pointer would be going twice as fast. Right, and okay. so you're taking your audio output from the read pointer. Okay. If you wanted to lower the octave, you cut it in half. So your, your write pointer Always goes is going at a constant rate. rate, and then you are changing the frequency of the output wave by changing the speed of that read pointer as it right. chases Which that. Which is essentially how fast the read pointer is sampling. Right. Um, okay. Then all of the notes in between an octave are fractional. Um, we did it all in fixed point. I, they're all in a lookup table because the way music notes work because the octave is doubled, but we want to split it into 12 intervals. The ratios if you want to increase by uh, one half step in music you multiply it by the 12th root of two um, and if you want to go up two steps you multiply it by two to the two over 12 and then to go up a whole octave is now two to the 12 over 12 which is just two so it's sort of a logarithmic curve sure. in there, so it's all in a lookup table so that we don't have to compute it on the fly. How did you, because I'm not hearing any like clicks or pops or anything, so you, are, are you somehow smoothing over that crossover point when the read pointer steps over the right pointer? Yes, so that's sort of a another step we added originally. Your problem with any kind of real-time pitch shifting is that you run out of um, samples because you're writing faster than you're reading or you're reading faster than you're writing. Um, so the way we fixed that is we ha actually had two read, read pointers now offset in the buffer by half the buffer length. Um, they're both incrementing at the same amount and our output is actually the sum of the two read pointers. Okay. Um, which, because they're both sinusoids, is just an average. Um, and that means that if you have a click or a pop from a discontinuity, um, because that'll be audible when the read pointer passes the right pointer, um, the opposite read pointer is absolutely not at a discontinuity. Yeah. Um, because they're offset and going at the same frequency. Um, so that the averaging of those, it doesn't make it perfect. I think there are a number of improvements that could be made to make that sound cleaner when you're pitch shifting, and we can listen to some of that on mm -hmm. the sinusoid. Um, but it works to eliminate any horrible clicks and pops. Sure. Uh, and can you talk through the stuff that you have breadboarded here? Yeah, so this is all for our guitar output. Um, from the guitar, we have... Well, do you want to talk about what's coming from the guitar? Yeah, sure. So on the guitar, we have a hexaphonic pickup. Um, it's just plugged here into an internal breakout board uh, that's supplying power and the outputs. And that goes to this 19-pin uh, jack. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So then we have that uh, connected up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the outputs we're not using, but the, so they're grounded. But, um, 
power and ground we have, and then the six pickup outputs we have. And we're passing them uh, through a low pass filter here, try to get rid of some of that noise, and then um, into some uh, amplifiers. Yeah. So are these all op amp amplifier yeah. circuits? Mm -hmm. Yep. They have internal gain so that um, we're not setting an external gain. Um, the capacitor is just um, like on the output to smooth it out. Okay. And then the resistor is just hooking the inverting input to ground instead of leaving it floating. Um, so it's all they're all hooked up in a non-inverting gain okay. mode. Okay. Um, and then those come into then the ADC this is the over input here. Of the ADC yep. that's on the TE one. And cool. So there's one for each of the six strings and the six channels. Um, and keeping those separate is what allows us to customize the tuning each string. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Very nice. Should we yeah. listen to it with the sign? Yeah, right? I think that'll okay. be easier to see the pitch shifting. So now the same program's running, but instead of plugging in the guitar, you have the function generator. Yeah, plug. just the function generating uh, sine wave just plugged into one of the channels. Um, okay. It works also on the other ones. Okay. They're all running the same pitch shift. Well, okay. they're all running different pitch shifters. Um, so if you want to change channel one to up 12, you can cool. hit the octave. It's doubled. Yeah. You can see the frequency is doubled. The scope isn't good at measuring it because of that. Um, the pops yeah. and the transition. The yeah, sure. Um, yeah. But uh, you can sort of generally see it on yeah. the scope as well. Um, and you can shift it down 12. Yeah, certainly. Um, maybe shift it up to. That's a nice one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and depending on the pitch we're shifting to, the discontinuities cause different amounts of yeah. co like quality in the filter, and the gain is slightly different. Um, so I think there's a lot of further work yeah. that could be put into just more and more signal integrity. Sure. Um, but... And then can you briefly describe what's the FPGA doing and then what's the HPS doing? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the HPS is just like changing. Uh, we have PIO set up so that we can change which direction the shift is, is occurring on. Okay. Up or down, or, and um, we have an integer 0 to 12 that is like tells how much the shift is. I guess 12 is like the octave, right? And then, mm -hmm. I don't know the music terminology. Like, that's, <laughs> sure. That's the gist of it. Yeah. So it's it's implementing like a command line user interface. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's it's very doing. simple. It's just taking in those values and sending them to the FPGA, which is programmed to. Okay. Cool. Very nice, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank you.